Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Auto Repair Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Walker, and I'm here with Kim again, and we are- Two gonna, in a row. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's been a little while. Now we got two back-to-back. -back. Well, we say they're back-to-back. -back. We don't know. I Maybe think not. something else might be coming out. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll see. They don't always go in the order they're recorded, y'all. <laughs> well, because that's smart. Like, it's marketing. We know what needs to happen, when it needs to happen, So we're trying. Mm-hmm to have things come out in a timely manner when they make sense. All right, so today we are going to be talking about fragmented marketing and how it's hurting your brand and wasting your money. But first, I wanna thank RepairPal for sponsoring the Auto Repair Marketing Podcast. Learn more about RepairPal at repairpal.com forward slash shops. I'm surprised we haven't talked about this before. Like in a, we've talked about it, but in a dedicated. Yeah. This is going to be podcast number, what, 78? I, I think. We'll see. Well, It depends uh, on ish. how that other one falls in there. But it's going, to be, it's going to be somewhere between 77 and 80. Yeah. And we, we have not done a dedicated podcast episode uh, to this yet. But honestly, it's one of the most important things. Yeah, we do talk about it kind of roundabout all the time. Yeah. In fact, I just, if you prefer, well, maybe some people are watching this on YouTube possibly. But I just taught this in our Tuesday teaching last week. Mm -hmm. So our November 2023 Tuesday teaching in our Facebook group was based on the same topic. So what do we mean by fragmented marketing? Okay, so you don't know this because it's not in the blog that you wrote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what came to my mind as I was teaching the class, so y'all know Brian is very, I'm very organized but Brian is a stick to the topic kind of guy and I'm a go off and tell stories kind of gal. So in this I'm, Tuesday I'll teaching, I take it we're about to hear a story. Well, no, the thing that came to my mind when <laughs> you say <laughs> fragment is back when we first started using computers and you had to defrag. Oh, Do you remember that? Yeah. I thought you were going to talk about Fraggle Rock. Oh, I don't see how that it mm. doesn't have anything to do with it right. at all. But back to the defragger. And for younger people, they're probably like, what? Right? We don't do that anymore, right? There's no, I don't, no, think, I don't so. think there's such a thing. Well, we're all Mac now, it's, so our yeah. crap just works. It, yeah. So, but I remember it seems like once a month, and I trained my mama, and she would be like, we need to do that defrag thing. You're a Southern girl. I trained, but I trained my mama. It's where you, right? You'd go in and you would select this feature and you could watch it it was mesmerizing to me i was fascinated it's to me it was like a bunch of filing cabinets where all your files on your computer were completely disorganized and you would watch all these puzzle pieces fall in place together and at the end of this defragging everything was back color organized it was all perfectly put together all the little blocks and squares so to me fragmented marketing is this thing's over here doing this and this thing's over here doing this and none of it makes sense in the big picture together. Yeah, all things that they kind of should be working for the same goal and purpose, but they don't have a clue what the other one's doing. Right. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. So did yeah. you like that defrag Yeah, thing? I do. I do. It's kind of a blast from the past. I totally forgot about that. But... Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to defrag your marketing. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, because I mean, gosh, we we have people that come to us and they got one person doing the website and another person doing the social, and they got a new sign on their building that has a, a new logo, logo, or um, it, they got a you know a, a wrap on their vehicle and it's you know looks completely different, or you know it's like you. All right, hold on. If our friend Don is listening to this, he's going to think we're talking about him because he just updated his logo. No, Don has done an he amazing job. He is doing job. it Everything, right. Everything. I just like, want to be clear, Don, we're not talking about you because you're doing it. You are totally defragging it. Yeah. But no, some Don's people. Don has done an amazing job. That's, yeah. that's right, though. He just had his truck wrapped, and that truck he, looks, looks awesome. Yeah, it's fire, as Peyton would say. Yeah. So, you know, like... Don, Don, well, we recorded an episode with Don where we talked about the process yeah. of uh, him having a new logo created. We did not create that logo. I recommend the place to him where he got that logo created. And unlike most people, 
when he got that new logo, Don implemented it everywhere. everywhere. The new sign on yes. the building, the wrap on the truck, the logo on the the shirts and the repair orders and and everything. Like he wasted no time and and got it all done. But yeah, well done. <laughs> You know, you'll you'll be working with a vendor, for example, and have them doing something with your marketing. And when it comes time to renew with them, if there's even a renewal process, they just keep using your old logo because you never told them that you got a new logo. Or I, I had to double check. So Don, just letting you know, I very quickly jumped over here, and it is on his social. It's on his website. Well, of course, it so is. he did all the things. <laughs> Well, I just knew as soon as I said it, somebody's going to be like, oh, let me go see his new logo. So but he did the thing. The, the fragmented marketing, it typically takes place because you've got too many hands in the pot. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, and I shared this when I taught in our Facebook group, but the problem with it is that there's no one internally who's managing it. And so somebody walks in your shop and they're selling you on the new magazine. Well, they're going to have their graphic designer because that's part of their sales pitch. Oh, we'll take care of it for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it for you. And so you give them very quickly whatever information you want to give them, and they email you your ad for you to approve. Well, they don't know that you have a campaign going on social media that – should coordinate with that ad in that magazine. And then the next thing you know, maybe you're doing radio advertising and you're sharing something in that radio commercial and then you're doing um, some other ad campaign somewhere else. And now you got multiple people using your logo, not using it the way that it should be. It's stretched out. It's pixelated because they're not using the right file. And Again, in the nobody's... example of radio, you got a different message going on there yep. that you have, you know, in another place. The voice is different in that message. You know, it, it's it's what they wrote for you. That's fragmented marketing. Nothing yeah. is really working together. Nobody's on the same page. It's confusing to your audience. And this was us when we had our 100%. shop because you know we were not marketers back then. When when I asked him to come into the business to do uh, the, our marketing for us, she literally asked me, "What is marketing?" Yeah. And she was a school counselor and a teacher, uh, and you know we she did an amazing job. Uh, but we were still all over the place, all over the with, place with that because, you know, whatever person of the week walked in to sell us some kind of marketing, you we know, it like, was either a yes or a no. And mm-hmm. if we did, then they had their designers do everything. And and we thought that was great because we're like, oh, that's great. We're not designers. And then fast forward to when our branding was on point and we knew who we were. We knew who yeah. our customers were. We knew what our message needed to be. Then we were much more in control. And surprise, surprise, when all that happened, we're now bringing in the right customers. We're getting the right work in. And things were just working the way that they were supposed to be working. Yeah, yeah. about the time we became the Triangle's most female-friendly shop. That's right. And that became our message. And we just hammered that home. And, it, it you know, that was before being female-friendly was cool. and uh, And it worked. Really, you know, really and the well. thing is, we we knew where to put it, and so we would put our message in front of people. And in, in the years past, when social media wasn't such a big thing, digital marketing wasn't such a big thing, you could put your message. Back then, it was the marketing rule of seven. You'd put your message in front of people, and we would see them out in the community. You know, we were in the chamber. We were sponsoring this, sponsoring that. We were in the BNI groups. We had... We were on radio, um, in magazines, and so people would encounter our message on multiple levels in different places. Today, that's not so much the case. Well, you still have people talking about the marketing rule of seven. I mean, you'll you'll hear you'll hear people talking about that in their classes that people need to see your message seven times. And that is so old school. The well, marketing rule of seven was it came out in the thirties. Mm-hmm. Like it's this is an actual thing. You go Google the marketing rule of seven. It was, that was something that came out in the 1930s. So, you know, I need to ask, so my sister is a professor of marketing. I need to ask her what she's teaching. And 
also are really, I sit on the marketing advisory committee for our local university. I need to ask them, yeah. what are you saying? What are you teaching? Because it's not right anymore. Well, I have no idea what it was in the, in the 1930s. But in 2007, the average person, or the average American anyway, uh, was getting about 5,000 ads per day that they would see in various places. And this was before yeah, I mean, the big digital marketing push yeah, so world. In 2022, they said that it had doubled. It was now you know, 10,000 ads mm. per day. So you think about the 1930s, and I mean, unless you're standing in Times Square in New York City, you're not seeing that many advertisements. I mean, TV was a thing, but it wasn't like, you know, n- I mean, every family's not sitting there. No, but even if you it. just think about what's happening right now, right? We're recording this in late November. Mm-hmm. We've been watching Christmas movies. We're th- we're that. We are those people. We've been watching Christmas movies since the beginning of November. I think maybe even in October we may have watched our first one. But I'm thinking about Hallmark Christmas movie. And we've switched from the regular cable to YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. So we're watching Hallmark Christmas Channel last night. And it's stopping for ads probably, I'm going to say maybe 10 times in the course of a movie. At least. And yeah. each time it stopped, there were four ads mm-hmm. on average. Some were longer because some did 30 seconds, some did a minute. So, you know, that's m- minimum 40 ads in one Christmas movie. Add on top of that, we're scrolling on our phones while we're watching the movie. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, this is just in the course of an hour and a half. Yeah, I mean, advertisements are everywhere. There's so many businesses out there that are vying for your attention. So, you know, if it used to be in the 30s that somebody needed to see your message yep. seven times, the, an article that I read said that it's probably more like 77, and I'm guessing that's an arbitrary number, you know. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, in, in classes I've lot. taught recently, because, again, it's, you know, it's like your customers. They go to this shop, and this shop's going to tell them this is what's wrong with the car, and they go to another shop, and this. So, I've read articles that said it was more like 13, that someone has to see your message 13 times before they're going to make a decision. But I could definitely see it being much higher than that. Yeah. Much higher than that. So if you if you have ads in your local magazine and you have advertisements running on the radio and ads running on Google and Facebook and all of these things, if if they're not cohesive, then people don't, they don't, subliminally pick up on it that this is the same company. So yep. you're the 77 or the 13 or whatever it is, number of times that you need to get in front of them. If they don't subliminally realize that that ad is from the, from the same company, then it's wasted. Total, total wasted. It's confusing. People will not take the time to try to figure it out. So they're just going to move on. You know, you can have a, uh, a direct mail piece. And a radio advertisement, two totally different things. Something where one person is reading it, they're getting to see the colors and the the logo and the fonts and, you know, any other design elements that you put into it. And a radio advertisement that subliminally a person can know that is from the same company because the message is the same. Yeah, and the tone and the feeling and the colors and, you know, it's everything just works together the way it's supposed to. And the billboard and the truck wrap is the same thing. Like... You, you've you got to have that cohesiveness or you're wasting your marketing dollars with mm-hmm. the the noise that there is in marketing now. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And you know, what, what prevents that is when you have a plan, right? If we if we plan to fail, what's the saying? I'm already screwing you it up. You plan to fail. If oh, you, you fail to plan, you plan to there fail. There you go. Yeah. So, you know, we just did... So November was on fragmented marketing. In October, we did, um, actually, no, 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 no. Well, what happened was we teach every third Tuesday, but in the month of November, we did an extra one. Oh, yeah. So we, as Shop Marketing Pros, got together. We fl- actually flew Loretta in from, Phil- from Pennsylvania, and we had an in-person all day long. We dedicated, put it on the calendar, planned ahead, And we spent a whole day planning the marketing for ourselves for next year. 
And so the next day, which was Wednesday, I want to say it was November 7th, maybe, we did an extra class in our Facebook group teaching you how to do that. I've also recorded a podcast, and we'll put it in the show notes, with Matt Wagg and Lola Schmidt, and that came out in October, I think, and we were talking about how shop owners can successfully create their annual marketing plan because so, so, so many shop owners talk about it but never do it. They say, I need to do that. They still never do it. Well, Lola or Laura Lee and um, Matt have done it, and so they shared some real helpful practical tips, and then we also have a pod, a, a blog talking about it. So you, yeah, you so can I'm gonna fix have this all with of those plan. in the show notes. This is this is one of those episodes that you want to go look at the show notes. I'm going to have the the guide to the real world marketing yep. plan, and it is a guide that takes you kind of step by step how to do a marketing plan. And I'm not talking about marketing plan like they teach you how to u- do in university because that is <laughs> most business owners are just not going to do that. And if they do, nobody knows what they're looking at in yep. the end. A real I'm one. talking about something that lays it out step by step. This is what we're doing at this time of year. This is the message. This is who the audience is and all of that. Uh, and it, it, it simplifies the process. But like Kim said, we had, you know, internally we have, we have people that are on our own internal marketing team. Um, you know, so not everybody that works for us, uh, everyone who works for us will have their hands in our marketing at some point, but the ones who are driving it, mm-hmm. we have a, a small team of five people that, uh, that we get together uh, twice a month and we meet and talk about our marketing. But those people are the ones that came together and we, we created our own real world marketing plan based on the steps that we gave you in that guide. And then Kim did that Facebook, uh, the teaching in the Facebook group where she had some of those people that were there yep. on the call and you, you like really get into the details of what we did. And oh yeah. So we're gonna. Ha- I'm gonna have that link. You'll have to join the Facebook group to be able to see it, but yep. you'll have the link to be able to get directly to yep. the uh, the live video. It won't be live anymore, but <laughs> to get to the video of that teaching, and and you really should go look at that because yeah, I mean planning is at the the foundation of what we're talking yep. about. And you know what I love about having the plan is that. When you get those people who are going to walk in your door or send you an email or call you on the phone and present the next shiny bullet to you or the next marketing um, opportunity for you, you now have the language to be able to say, you know what, I already have my marketing plan together for this year and that is not in there. I don't have the budget for that. And so when you do your marketing plan, it's, it gives you what you need to be able to turn things down or if it's something you really want to do find a way to fit it in there why are you what, what, they can't <laughs> i'm over here for those of you that can't see you can't see that brian is just sitting here with this funny look on his face well it's it comes back to you and your expressions that you always mess up what did i do now you're talking about shiny bullets they're silver bullets it's still shiny no well, yeah but it's a silver bullet because that is how you kill the werewolf is with a I don't know anything bullet. about a, were- a werewolf or it, it listen. They knew what I meant when I said shiny bullet. So silver bullet, shiny objects. They they still know. <laughs> they It still worked. He's <laughs> she, sitting here laughing. She cracks me up, y'all. Every expression. And what I just mm. realized is that Caroline is exactly like her. And <laughs> if you listen to the episode that Caroline and I just recorded, I think it's going to be two episodes before this. I believe it's episode number 76. Did um, she do it? Yeah, a couple of times. So That's funny because I rely on her often to, <laughs> to fix me. <laughs> All right, so let's tell people how to fix their fragmented marketing. All right, you already told them about... Yeah, the, well, we said that your marketing you know, needs to be cohesive. You have a plan. You need a plan. But you need to simplify. If you find yourself in that place where your oh. marketing is just a mess, first thing to do is simplify, simplify, simplify. Yep. And that could mean all kinds of things, but... Well, one example is, you know, I used to teach a class about social media and I I don't do that anymore the way I used to do it because I would teach about Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, which I know that it's not called Twitter anymore, but back when I taught it, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. So people would leave panicked. Oh, now I have to do all the things. No, you don't have to do all the things. When we say simplify, 
let's get a couple of things going that you do very well before you start adding on. You can't do anything well if you're doing too many things. Yeah, and make sure that when you are doing those couple of things that you are making them completely cohesive. Yeah. The way it looks, the message, the voice, you know, all of that should be cohesive. And then every time that you add something back in or in for the first time, you make sure that it matches the brand. And and the brand is really what we're talking about here, which we did an episode all like that in the notes as well. Well, and speaking um, of the brand. Where we're talking about what a brand really is because it's so much more than your logo. Yep. So speaking of that, so many people just have a logo and they don't realize that the brand is so much more. And so we want you to have a brand style guide, a brand kit. And so... We will include a link to ours so that you can see it as an example. I put this in our Facebook group in that class that I taught. But your branding style guide is, it's your guardrails. It's your boundaries. So when you do accept the opportunity to run an ad in a magazine or whatever it might be, you give them your branding style guide. And it says, this is how you use my brand. This is what is acceptable. This is our tone of voice. This is how we want people to experience us. And part of that is your logo, but it's also the colors, the fonts. Uh, For us, we even have it laid out with regard to the the symbols that we use and the the design pieces, the elements that go into that. So it's a big deal. it it, It makes it easier because it's nearly impossible to have 100% of your marketing being done by one company or especially one person. Uh, there's going to be different designers that are involved in it at, at some point, usually. And I, I know that maybe some of you have really got it together. You might have your own in-house people or whatever who are doing these things for you. And that's great. That's amazing if you're doing that. But most of the time you're going to wind up, you know, it's like, okay, well, I have this one company that does this, this, and this, but I need to get this thing done right now. Like our clients, for example. If they want a direct, if they want direct mail, we we don't do that. So they're going to have to work with a direct mail company. Right. If they want a billboard, we don't do that. So they're going to have to work with a billboard company. But if they have their brand style guide, like Kim says, it's the guardrails. Well, I've I've literally seen before where a uh, a designer in in this I'm going to use the term loosely as designer because they should have never done this, but they smashed someone's logo. Like they changed the proportions of it because it didn't fit well. Well, in your brand style guide, it will literally tell them this cannot be done. Mm -hmm. And it will usually give them the logo in a couple of different ways. So like you'll have a square logo or a round, you know, um, a square logo will fit into a round, uh, which that sounds funny, but you know, like a profile picture, for example. Uh, Or if you have a wide logo, you know, it'll give them that, that square option. Uh, and show them exactly how to use it, so yeah. so that they don't make some like if they if if you have two different designers that both of them follow the brand style guide, it's going to be cohesive in the right. end. Yeah, they never sure. talk to each other. They have no idea what the other one is doing, but it's going to be cohesive because they follow the brand style guide. Yeah, and we probably should have put that as one of the first things because it it's one of the most basic foundational things when it comes to your marketing. And so we talked earlier about, you know, this person's doing this and this company's doing that. And no matter how that plays out, you really need to have one person who is in charge of your brand, your company's marketing, the direction, the... Like an internal person. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny because your shop is your baby, right? Shop Mm -hmm. Marketing Pros is our baby, and we've been, we've had a marketing agency for going on 12 years now. And this is the very first time that I am ready, willing, prepared, and I've already started allowing someone else in our company to be responsible for our marketing. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I think I'm so comfortable with it now is because of all this stuff. We have these things in place. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say it. Our 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 plan is for Caroline to be <laughs> our chief marketing officer before yep. the end of 2024. Yeah. 
So we and are, she knows that. We've already talked yeah. to her about that. But what I love about it is that, you know, and I'm telling you this as shop owners because there may be someone in your shop, like it doesn't have to be you. Mm -hmm. But before anyone else can do it, you have to have that comfort of giving your baby to someone. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's how it feels for me. Like I've I've had such extreme ownership, those words used intentionally that I, w I was afraid and very uncomfortable giving it to someone. Um, but but there's got to be one person because if there's multiple people that are doing it, yeah. then it makes it even worse because now you have multiple people internally yep. that are uh, overseeing functions of marketing and then you have all of these different providers outside as well. So well, it I just, figured out uh, who it was because Caroline is also an extreme ownership type person. And... She just sees things that need to be done and she just gets in there and does it. And so it was easy to watch that growth and progression happen. So I'm saying that to say, if you start allowing people in your shop to start doing, you may realize that there's someone right underneath your nose who can take that off of your plate. And then there's the approval part. Brian just had, to, he just had a meeting with Caroline mm -hmm. just last week because We've gotten to the point where we've been so busy that she was waiting on us for approval of stuff. And I'm finally at the point where I'm like, girl, you don't need my approval. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we trust her. Yeah. So Brian, Brian had to have that same meeting where she was saying, okay, well, what do you want to do when this happens? What do you want to do? And he finally was like, listen, if I'm holding you up, just move forward. So find out who that person is. It just, it might not be you. And we said internal. Mm -hmm. Well, there there are other options. We'll get to that. But, you know, the, the next step would be to work with the minimum number of outside companies. Yeah. We, know, we, so. I think we say in the blog one, but we understand that that's not always possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually you're going to have your person that will, like the company that will do all of the digital. Yep. And then. No, they don't do any print or. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's when you get into those outliers like the billboards and the radios and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's where you end up almost always having to work with multiple companies. But the key here is as few as possible. You don't want one, <laughs> one person or one company doing your website, one doing your ads, one doing your social media, one directing you and what to do in your local community. Like that's too many. I'm going to screw it up. Chiefs in the kitchen. <laughs> too many cooks stir in the pot. In the whatever. <laughs> Oh my gosh, y'all. So, yeah, I, and and look, that sounds very self-serving coming from us. I know that because Well, we never said you know, hire us. Well, yeah, and and that is that is the point that I want to make. We are not the only ones in this industry who will do like all of your your digital marketing. There's others out there. I don't care. Oh, I mean, obviously, I would love for it to be us, but <laughs> my point is is that Keep it keep your circle small. Yeah, and especially when it comes to things like your website and your SEO, oh my gosh, don't mix those. Like, don't just have one person who's doing your website and one person who's doing your SEO, if at all possible. Um, and then, you know, it makes it so much easier too when the same person who handles your website is handling your digital ads. Because what happens when you have multiple companies that are doing it, one company needs the other one to do something and then they're waiting on something to be yeah. done. It doesn't get done right. Or you and, need a code put on this or, you yeah. know. Yeah, so you can you can greatly simplify and make things much more cohesive if you have a minimum number of well, providers that removes, you're working with. It removes a lot of frustration on the shop owner's part mm -hmm. as well. Um, you're having to talk to you know multiple different people, and and so it's it's smart for you as you know overall. Yeah. And then you know the last thing would be to hire a fractional chief marketing officer or a full-time, yeah, like your own internal chief marketing officer. So we, we just did this not for marketing purposes, but for financial purposes, we have a CFO, mm -hmm. a, a fractional chief financial, chief officer. financial officer, someone who is part-time. That's what fractional is. Yep. Just a little, little piece of the puzzle, a little piece of the pie, whatever. So that um, CFO is someone who is, I mean, a lot of them do have different services or the way they look at it. What we're talking about is someone who is responsible for 
the guidance and direction of your marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your, your chief marketing officer, fractional or full time, they are going to be the ones that are going to hold everyone accountable yes. to the brand standards, to the messaging that's put out there. They're going to be the one person in your organization that knows everything that's happening in your marketing. And can make decisions. They're going to look at the reports and, you know, look, determine, is this working? Is it not? Yep. yep. For us, we have, we have some clients who have CFOs and they are CMOs. part CMOs. They are a part of the conversations that we have as well. Um, they are included in those decision-making processes. They are a part of the, the strategy and direction, but also like Brian said, the accountability, they're sitting in on those report meetings as yeah. well. And there, there are two, there's two companies that I know of in our industry that, uh, that do that service. Yep. And that's, uh, that's Overdrive, um, Mike which is owned by Mike Delacruz. Uh, and then there's uh, Turnkey, uh, which is Carrie Lynn Roddenberg. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so those are two companies that, uh, you know, they, they would oversee everything and make sure that that cohesiveness exists, yep. um, you know, so, you know, look into them if yep. you're interested. And there'll, there'll be a link in the show notes again as well. But yeah, y'all, the thing here is we're, we're sharing this with you because we see it all the time. And the companies that have these things in place, the cohesiveness, the branding is under control, the you know, the organization, they have a plan, they have someone that's guiding and directing what those shops that have that going on, their marketing is very different. It performs very differently, very successfully, but then the, the ones who need to press the defrag button, it's really kind of a, a mess. Mm -hmm. And so we want to share this, you know, if you go into 2024 with anything, um, we hope that you go in with the defrag understanding I got to get some organization into my marketing. So. All right. Well, Hey, why don't you tell people about our, our group and, uh, and also, yep. you know, about sending us topics, not, you know, not necessarily yep. topics, but your questions that we can then turn into topics. So we're right. answering. Well, yeah. so y'all know, you've heard us talk about, they ask you answer. We, we eat, breathe, live, sleep, operate by that. And so we put out content that you want, that you need, that you're looking for. So we want to know what questions do you have when it comes to marketing your auto repair shop. Send us your questions, your comments, your ideas, and you can do that through email at ask at shopmarketingpros.com or podcast at shopmarketingpros.com. But we also want to invite you to join our really amazing Facebook group, the Auto Repair Marketing Mastermind. Just head over to Facebook, do a search for it. We're very proud that we just uh, surpassed, and it's funny, you know, the tipping point thing happens. You know, that snowball gets rolling, and we weren't expecting it to happen as quickly as it did, but something happened in the last month or so that just really propelled us, and we just um, we just went over a thousand members in that Facebook group. So we hope you join us there, get involved, post your ideas, questions, tips. Um, what you're doing for marketing in your shop and we hope to see you over there. Yeah. And thank you again to repair pal for sponsoring this episode. Uh, we are just one of a handful of podcasts on the aftermarket radio network. You can find the others at aftermarketradionetwork.com. And if you have not listened to any of those, you really should go check them out. Um, and, uh, hope you'll listen in again next week until then go fill those bays.